uh, the question is, if when you die, all right, you find yourself in a place of judgment in front of God, and it ends up being the case that all those pesky Christians were right all along, what would your first statement be to God? Um, hey, it's pretty simple. At least I'm not Fred Phelps or Ted Haggard or any of these charlatans that make it a business of fleecing the flock. Nor am I one of the millions of people that that take into themselves this message of hatred that those people put forth. I, I'm neither of those because I do not subscribe to an ideology that requires that I reject logic, compassion, reason, and ignore my own conscience. Um, what sort of evidence would you find sufficient for you to abandon atheism and become a believer in God? Here's the short answer. What sort of evidence would you require to abandon your belief in Yahweh and believe in Allah, or Buddha, or the flying spaghetti monster, monster, or the uh, celestial teapot? What sort of evidence would you require? That's a good basis of what we would require, especially me. But no amount of logic and reason and arguments, I think, could do it. They've, they've all been exhausted, and without physical proof, then there's always room for debate. So it, come down, it comes down to what sort of physical evidence would do. Uh, the examples you mentioned, um, just don't cut it. A booming voice is better known as, you know, a megaphone. Uh, a burning bush, someone has a Zippo. That's, that's nothing these days. I mean, come on. It would have to simultaneously be something well outside our current theoretical understanding of the universe and be independently verifiable within that theoretical understanding of the universe. Because without an independent verification, um, we still have the debate of, was it a hallucination on my part? Was it a mass hallucination? So it has to be independently verifiable within what we know, but be so far beyond what we understand that the only explanation could be the supernatural. Um, I guess I couldn't tell you what that was, but you would think that God would know what that would be, and he would do it. Uh, third, do you think the new atheist movement is ultimately a good thing or a bad thing for free thinkers and skeptics? Uh, first of all, there's no new atheist movement. Uh, the term is red herring designed to draw attention to the suppo supposed anti-theist sentiments you described. Uh, the underlying message is be nice, polite atheist, and go stand in the corner, but shh, also be quiet. Uh, what you describe as anti-theism is nothing of the sort. It is simply treating religion by the same rules as every other area of human endeavor. You mentioned the anti-theism of Dawkins and Hitchens. Show me a statement that they have made against religion which would not also be levied against any other field of study or practice which has been proven to be false or harmful. And that's the key phrase right there. Another endeavor outside of religion that is also false and harmful. Furthermore, show such a field of study or practice which demands respect to the point of being above reproach simply by declaring it by fiat. Um, yeah, it's a good thing that we actually speak out against these things, and no, it is not anti-theism. It is holding religion to the exact same standard that we hold everything else in our society. Fourth, what sorts of decisions are affected by your atheism. Um, I know other atheist respondents have said none, but I disagree, uh, mainly because uh, our decisions are based on the totality of our life experience. Having lacked religious experience or not currently being in a religion does impact our decision making, at least at the subconscious level. So I think what you were talking about was more on the conscious level um, and on that, I, I can say yes. Um, uh, s there's uh, some people, uh, I've, I've stopped corresponding with some people because I was tired of them proselytizing to me instead of talking with me. Um, everything that they said was religion, 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 you have to convert, um, this is right, you're wrong. But they never, you know, they never listened to me in return. So I... I'm not into being, you know, 
a wall for someone to talk to. If they want a wall, they can go to, you know, they can go to Jerusalem if, if that's what they want. But uh, other than that, I can't think of anything where my atheism has uh, really impacted my decision making consciously. What's more important, acquiring as many true beliefs as possible or not acquiring as many false beliefs as possible? And you said that there was a distinction and that they're two different things. No, they're not. Um, let me put it this way. How does one know that they are gaining truths about the world if they have no mechanism by which to filter out the falsehoods of the world? Quelia Soup has a wonderful video on this. I'll probably link it in the sidebar. My first, you know, first real video. I don't know which direction the sidebar is. Um, and he explains it more eloquently than I ever could, but uh, I'll link that video for you. Um, I do want to address something you said in explaining this question, however. You said you prefer gaining more true beliefs because that makes life more interesting. Um, however, just because something is interesting doesn't make it true. Okay? Um, on top of that, believing in something isn't a requirement for it being interesting. I read a lot of science fiction books. I read a lot of fantasy books. Those are interesting. I know they're not true. Um, in fact, they, but they do impact, you know, my view of the world. It makes the world more interesting. Um, on top of that, just, just pick almost any field of scientific study about the world, um, or, or people. And almost all of them are fascinating in, in the patterns that they find and the, just just the, the beauty in the universe and in this world and in our own bodies and our own mind that we don't need to be looking outside to some some made up being to find beauty. It's it's here. So this is interesting enough. I, I don't need to bring falsehoods into my life for my life to be interesting.